Behind me is a pretty short number theory problem. I'm asking for the rightmost three digits of this number. So, how do we do this? Looks pretty sweet and short. However, the first step might not be immediately obvious, especially if you're not very familiar with number theory. So, I invite you guys to pause the video and try it for yourself. Done? <laughs> okay, well, let's, let's go on. Firstly, yeah, it's the sum of the odd numbers from 1 to 29 raised to the 400 power. But like, that doesn't really make it any easier. So is there any way we can analyze each individual number a little bit better? Hmm. Okay, firstly, we should also take note that finding the rightmost three digits of some number is just the same as finding the remainder when this is divided by 1000, right? Or computing this number mod 1000. So maybe we can consider modular arithmetics in mod 1000. Thing is, it's not really easy to think about what we're supposed to do here. However, there is one theorem that could give us some leeway, and that's called Euler's theorem. It states that if you have two numbers whose greatest common factor is one, or they are relatively prime, then Euler's theorem tells us that a to the phi of n is congruent to one mod n, where phi of n is basically the number of positive integers less than n, which are relatively prime to n. So this is Euler's theorem. Now, something cool happens when we take n to be 1000. If we were to compute phi of 1000, what would it be? Well, the phi of n has a really nice formula. It is equal to n times 1 minus 1 over p1 times 1 over 1 minus p2 times all the way to 1 minus 1 over pk, where p1, p2, all the way to pk are the distinct prime factors of n. So we can use this formula to compute phi of 1000. It's equal to, it's equal to 1000 and then the only prime factors of 1000 are 2 and 5. So we just have 1 over, sorry, 1 minus 1 over 2 and 1 minus 1 over 5. So yeah, this is phi of 1000. And if we were to actually evaluate what we just wrote, this over here actually comes out to be 400. So isn't that cool? If we were to take n to be 1000, then Euler's theorem would tell us that if a is relatively prime to 1000, then we have that a to the phi of 1000, or 400, this is congruent to 1 mod n, which is 1000. Euler's theorem would give this, and this is perfect because we have the 400th power, and we also are dealing with 400th powers over here. That is perfect. So, because of Euler's theorem, we've discovered an insight for this problem. So, does this mean that this entire number, does this mean that this entire number is just congruent to a bunch of ones added together? Is this like, is this the deal? No, <laughs> because there are some numbers in here which are not relatively prime to 1000. Remember, Euler's theorem only works when the, when the a and n are both relatively prime to each other. There are some numbers in here which are not relatively prime to 1000. Particularly, they are the numbers with a factor of 5, such as 5 to the 400. So this is actually wrong. This is not it. However, there are only three numbers over here which are not relatively prime. That would be 5 to the 400, and then plus, that would be 15 to the 400, and there would also be 25 to the 400. They all contain 400 factors, actually this one contains more factors of 5, but the point is that they contain factors of 5, and thus they are not relatively prime to 1000. Okay, let's first settle what we do know. Firstly, we know that from 1 to 29 inclusive, there are 15 odd numbers, and we know that there are 12 of them that are surely 1 mod 1000, and because we know that 3 of them 
have factors of five, right? So the remaining 12 we know for sure are relatively prime to 1000. They must be congruent to one mod 1000. So we know that there are for sure 12 of these ones. Now, these numbers, we are not sure. We cannot necessarily say that they are congruent to one mod 1000. How can we deal with them? Well, I'm going to write a plus, okay? So we can deal with them by first noticing that they both have a, they all have a factor of 5 to the 400, right? So this entire thing, this is congruent to 12 and then plus, they all have a factor of 5 to the 400, so we can take them out out of all of these terms. So that's 5 to the 400, and then that's 1 plus 3 to the 400, and then plus 5 to the 400, and then mod 1000, right? Now, this 3 to the 400, notice that 3 is relatively prime to 1000. So 3 to the 400 by Euler's theorem, well, <laughs> that's going to be 1 mod 1000. So this over here is just, sorry, <laughs> this over here is just 1 mod 1000. Now, we again have a 5 to the 400. So it basically suffices to calculate, to calculate 5 to the 400 mod 1000. How do we do that? Well, um, yeah, it might not seem exactly obvious how we can perform modular arithmetic on this number, but it's mod 1000, so maybe we can just repeatedly raise 5 to higher powers and observe a pattern with the last three digits. Indeed, if you were to actually, if you were to actually do that, then consider this. 5 to the 1 ends in 0, 005, right? And if you take 5 squared, this ends in 0, 025. If you take 5 cubed, it ends in 125. If you were to take 5 to the 4, it ends in 625. <laughs> and if you were to do 5 to the 5, it ends in 125. If you do 5 to the 6, it ends in 625. And you can see there's a pattern with the 125s and 625s. They repeat, right? In fact, for the exponent being greater than 2, we see that it repeats. And if the exponent is odd, it's going to be 125. If it's even, then it's 625. So therefore, we've deduced that 5 to the 400, therefore, is going to be congruent to 625 mod 1000, right? Because the last three digits repeat in a pattern. So therefore, this entire modular expression, this is just congruent to 12, and then plus 5 to the 400, that's congruent to 625 mod 1000. And we have 1 plus 1, that's 2. And then plus, this one is also congru congruent to 625 mod 1000, right? Mod 1000. And there we have it. This is finally an expression we can easily evaluate. If you were to actually evaluate this, you would see that this over here is congruent to 887 mod 1000. And therefore, since this number is congruent to 887 mod 1000, this would mean that 887 are the last three digits. Therefore, our answer is 887. This number ends in 887, that is our answer. Now, I want to talk about how you could come up with this insight during this problem. Firstly, it's actually a pretty well-known fact that the phi of 100 is equal to 40. So, it makes sense that the phi of 1000 would be equal to 400, because in the formula, all you need is an extra factor of 10, right? And 1000 has one more factor of 10 than 100. They both share the same prime factors, so it makes sense that the phi of 1000 would be 400. And when we take a look at Euler's formula, we see that we're able to match the exponent of 400 with phi of 1000, and we're able to get that to work in mod 1000, which is what we need for the rightmost three digits. So, all that combined, it makes it pretty obvious that Euler's theorem should have a part in this problem. And that would also mean that if you see something like, you know, to the 40th power, you would consider using mod 100, right? Especially if it's asking for the rightmost two digits in that case. So yeah, always be on the lookout for special numbers. You kind of have to 
be able to just recognize them, just like how you might be able to recognize that 32 is 2 to the 5. So that's going to be my take on the insight for this problem. If you learned something new from this video, if you found it interesting, then please do consider dropping a like and subscribing. Thank you very much. Bye.